What's going on there guys? Good evening, good Sunday evening. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Sunday, July 31st, last day of July. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. 2022, about 9.11 p.m. West Coast time here. Uh, latest quake on the globe shows a 3.2 into the area around the Indonesia Islands area. All right, before we get into earthquake activity, kind of want to chat about uh, the uh, fire situation up in Northern California. If my voice sounds a little crackly or raw, that's because I've been up there all day today in the McKinney fire uh, outside of Wairika uh, doing a story covering some uh, events throughout this region here. Unfortunately, we've seen some devastation uh, from this fire uh, near the Klamath River community. Uh, quite a few houses burned throughout that region. I did post that video on my channel. If you wish to check it out, you may. If you do not wish to, you don't have to. It's up to you. But uh, it does show quite a bit of devastation in there. And um, active fires. We were right there at the active fire today, me and Missy Mimi's. Okay, so latest info. This was put out. Um, I don't believe that's the right info here. I know it's at about 56,000 acres. Um, not for sure why. Oh, reported. The fire was actually reported July 29th, 241. See, I've smoke inhalation. Oh, man. All day long. My eyes are itchy. Uh, even a mask couldn't stop the smoke from uh, entering into my lungs, unfortunately. But, hey, that's what I got to do for a story. That's what I'm going to do. So, 52,000 acres updated 36 minutes ago. 0% containment. Uh, there's quite a few crews up there working this fire, trying to get it under control. Unfortunately, there was a pretty large explosion of fire uh, growth last night. And I'm sure there's going to be some more tonight with the monsoonal moisture and the uh, storms brewing up around the area. Evacuation orders are in effect for portions of Wairika down here. <clears throat> I was in there as well. Uh, everything, I believe, west of Interstate 5. Interstate 5 is going to be the... Oh, goodness. My voice is just a little bit crackly. I-5 right here in the red line. So anything west here. There's a lot of mountainous areas. A lot of trees come down here around the Wairika area. And uh, it's not a good deal uh, for those folks down there. Seeing a lot of people evacuating. Um, and that's a good reason to definitely get out of harm's way. There's uh, shelters and whatnot being set up around Weed, California. The Weed Community Center. Uh, that's an evacuation shelter. This link right here uh, can provide you with some uh, valuable information. In fact, this whole app right here, the watchduty.org um, website is very valuable when it comes to information. There's lots of uh, telephone numbers and whatnot to contact as well. If you're unsure, if you got pets uh, that you don't want to leave behind. Uh, let's see here. Latest, at least report her here per KNF. Today, a heavy smoke inversion over the McKinney fire helped limit growth, but also kept aircraft mostly grounded throughout the day. I did not see one aircraft up there at all. Uh, and I was up there from about, ooh, about 10 o'clock in the morning to, I don't know what time. I don't think I got out there until about four, about four o'clock or so, but I didn't see any aircraft. I've seen lots of ground crew. Uh, in there. Uh, the fire is now mapped at 52,498 acres and remains 0% contained. Crews have been working above Fort Jones and west of Wairika to cut off the fire's progress. But if you are in evacuation order, evacuation warning zones, definitely get ready um, for uh, to leave because this fire is no joke. It's, it's a big one. Also, unfortunately, we did get some further fires out there from uh, some more lightning strikes. I mean, how unlucky can we get? Right? And we got, uh, I, I just seen a rainbow here in my backyard. A little bit of monsoonal moisture coming in here to the Chico area. Not really too concerned about lightning here in the valley, but up in the mountains there, uh, we don't need any dry lightning. Uh, and that can definitely spark some more fires. So, looking at the latest fire map here, there's been a couple more incidents throughout the region here. Uh, this one up north is a new one. <coughs> uh, it was reported earlier this afternoon. Uh, looks like about 80 acres right now, 0% containment, um, and it's uh, it's out there kind of in the middle of nowhere. 
Uh, it looks like uh, the Alex fire is what it's called. Approximately 80 acres with isolated group and single tree torching. <coughs> We've seen that today in the McKinley, McKinney fire. Um, originally thought to be part of the McKinney fire now being run as a separate incident. Notice that the McKinney fire is down here to the south. Possible that these two could merge uh, along with other fires in the vicinity. Got a new one up here possibly it looks like reported <coughs> excuse me i'm unfortunately it's gonna happen um a new fire reported about 7 p.m here west coast time one acre uh zero percent contained uh zero percent contained hungry fire uh per first engine at scene one to 1.5 acres slow to moderate ro uh, rate of spread reported as a lightning strike so you see these lightning events are popping up all over the place, folks. And we got lots of monsoonal moisture pouring in from the south. Uh, it is spreading up into Oregon as well. I know there's a couple new fires up there in Oregon as well. Uh, but man, this is probably going to be lit up a lot more tomorrow in uh, terms of uh, new fires out here in Northern California, unfortunately. Here is the latest map here, the firm's fire information for resource management site. I will include this link here. This detects hot spots from satellite imagery. You can see the uh, heat signatures there throughout the day of the McKinney fire and also the, uh, what was this one called? The Hungry Fire? Look where that one's at. Kind of out there uh, in the middle of nowhere in some forested land. And uh, I'm sure not a whole lot of uh, uh, resources to get out there. Not for sure about communities or houses out there, but uh, looking at the map here, uh, these are heat signature um, hot spots, so to speak. So a couple new fires throughout the region here. Also, if you look into Oregon, it uh, looks like they had a couple up here north of Crater Lake. Um, not for sure exactly what this one's called, but it looks like, uh, you know, they had some lightning strikes up there as well. And I know they've had more rainfall than us here in California, but still things are, it's summer, it's midsummer. Things are dry and um, all it takes is a lightning strike, uh, one of them. To get a, a smolder going, a little fire, and then, the, you know, bam, it takes off. So we don't want any more. Unfortunately, it is in the forecast. So keep your eyes open. If you live out here in Northern California like me, it's hard to see. I couldn't see uh, a quarter mile in front of me from the McKinney fire. It was very dense, very dense. In fact, my vehicle still smells like smoke, not only on the inside, but on the outside. I can, like, literally, I can... It's parked in my driveway, and when I walk by it, it's got a overwhelming smell of smoke. So that's the latest update there on the fires. I know we got some down south, uh, but for the most part, I'm keeping an eye on areas north here. Uh, Wairika is very close to this fire, and this is where the new growth is, kind of on the southeastern flank. I know they're up there trying to fight it, trying to build a line uh, between the Wairika area and also you know, the, fight, the front lines here. But uh, there's a lot of heavy, heavily forested regions here uh, as you get down into Wairika. East of here, not so much. Uh, a lot of dry, open uh, areas, mountainous areas, but not a whole lot of trees, just some dry brush that would be more manageable to get under control. But when you got these heavily forested regions here, uh, it's, it's hard, it's definitely hard. 0% containment, once again, on the McKinney fire, crazy. Let me tell you. All right, earthquake activity. What's going on? I haven't even really had a chance to look at the earthquake activity today. I've been super, super busy. So let's see what we got here. Uh, n definitely some noticeable activity up here. Notice the activity up in Iceland, right? Definitely been having a swarm of movement up there. We'll get there in a second. Uh, down through the middle America trench here, off the coast of Guatemala, Nicaragua, and uh, Ecuador area, once you get down here, it's into the Prue-Chile Trench. But notice a pretty good swarm of activity kicking up here today uh, in the four and five range. I'm not for certain if we've seen anything above that today. Let me bring up the largest magnitudes. Looks like a 5.5, the largest so far today uh, in the Pakistan area, just offshore it looks like. This is kind of in the area um, we did have some swarming out here, remember, in Iran the uh, past couple weeks. But this area is much further to the east and south, but still along this plate boundary around the Arabian Sea. Getting in on some activity for sure in the Pakistan area. Uh, into the 
Uh, Tokyo, or south of Tokyo, right around this trench area, we've been monitoring a swarm of activity as well. Looks like that has returned today in a big way once again. Seven earthquakes. Uh, so far, two 5.4 earthquakes. And below that, quite a few fours, and I'm sure some threes as well. This area has seen quite a bit, and I'm talking quite a bit of activity here over the last week or so. 14 earthquakes for a tally. Uh, you can add some more fives and fours on the earthquake map, but I'm sure there's a lot more than uh, that, than what's showing up there on that map. Uh, around Manila, or North Manila, Philippines area, getting some aftershock sequences there from that seven-pointer that struck there last week. A couple fours and fives in the mix. Down here throughout Papua New Guinea and the in Indonesia Islands area, some movement as well. Not a whole lot throughout the... Fiji area or the Tonga Trench. We got one earthquake of deep uh, significance here, 4.5, into the Kermadec Islands, the Kermadec Trench region. So might want to watch this. This was earlier this morning, it looks like, as well. Uh, but still might want to watch this region upstream uh, when we see these deep earthquakes that tend to uh, create stress there at the, uh, the upper levels. Puerto Rico area. Uh, see what we got uh, over here around Haiti. Got a 4.7. That was earlier this afternoon time frame. Some further movement and some swarming out there in our typical area outside of Puerto Rico, southwestern portion. Not a whole lot going on through the Puerto Rico Trench, which is a good thing. And up here around the Iceland area, the USGS reporting a 5.4, and it looks like a more recent 4.4 in this region. Uh, we'll check out the EMSC model here in just a little bit. Some movement up into Alaska as well along the Aleutian Trench, 5.3, the largest in this uh, little cluster of quakes here, although this one here pretty deep, about uh, 53 or uh, 41 kilometers for that 5.3, bringing up the uh, all magnitudes here throughout the Alaska region. A little bit of activity through the Cook Inlet, Anchorage area, and up around Denali. This is all very typical movement along the major plate boundary uh, through the West Coast. Some activity it looks like in the Washington region. Uh, most notably around the Mount St. Helens area. We'll check out the seismograph here in just a second. Mountain Hood had some activity as well. Nothing big, just some microquakes kicking off uh, throughout the day today. And of course down south, uh, let's see what we got. Some movement outside of Redding around Mount the uh, uh, Shasta Lake area. Seen a couple earthquakes here, about seven of them so far around the Bella Vista area. Somewhat deep as well, about 22 kilometers. So kind of interested to see what the tremor map is like tonight uh let's see not a whole lot as you go south you notice uh, just a little minimal movement again just as alaska this is a major plate boundary so microquakes are going to be very common throughout the area no major swarms to note here in the southern part of the state and the rest of the uh the states here a little activity outside texas and one around elgin right Lugoff, okay, Lugoff, South Carolina, but still within that vicinity of that uh, swarming activity we've been watching. See on the Big Island, Pahala, movement uh, very typical right there. Not a whole lot going on around the Lohi Seamount or Mauna Loa. Up at top, a uh, little bit of earthquake activity. It looks like a couple twos there. Some very shallow depths there. Uh, let's check out the Trimmer map tonight. See what we got for Cascadia Trimmer. Ooh, a little big one there. That will explain the activity we're seeing up there around the uh, Shasta Lake area. Remember, we had that little swarm of movement around the Bella Vista area. So we are getting some uh, little, little bit of crustal quakes here. Okay, I say crustal because this movement here is mostly around 35 45 kilometers down dip into the cascadia this is trimmer events now of course uh a lot of times when we get that dipping here that that trimmer activity it does add stress up here at the crustal regions 22 kilometers is what we are looking at for some of this earthquake activity outside of redding uh, but that does make sense here for the movement that we're noting on the usgs map so a lot of strain building up on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Been watching that uh, for a little while. Uh, it's only a matter of time before that thing does unzip. That's a Cascadia, that is. Uh, Mount St. Helens, let's double check this here real quick and see what we got for microquake activity at the volcano. 
Uh, right around the dome station, September September lobe. There's a little bit of activity. See this? A couple of small microquakes here throughout the last couple hours. And as we look on the uh, afternoon, morning time frame, a little bit. But no major seismic unrest. Again, this is all very small, very small microquake activity uh, in the area of Mount, uh, Mount St. Helens. All right, moving over to the EMSC model. Uh, hopefully this thing will pop up. There we go. Uh, some activity still showing up there. Looks like the rate, the most recent quake of 5.3. Not for sure if the USGS is reporting that. Uh, just a few minutes ago, actually about 25, 30 minutes ago, seen another 5.3 in this area of the Aleutian Trench. So watch this area pretty closely. Swarms do tend to point towards much uh, larger activity. Up here around Iceland, uh, looking at a more numerous sequence of quakes up there. It's been ongoing for a couple days now. <clears throat> a couple days now. Completely lost my voice there. Luckily, I had a drink right here for me to <clears throat> to uh, attend to. Hopefully, my voice will hold up. <clears throat> but man, did I have a headache all day. <clears throat> but that's my fault, right? All right. Looking up here, quite a few fours, threes, twos in the mix up here. Uh, I haven't seen any major changes at the volcanoes. <clears throat> up there but it's definitely something to watch pretty closely <clears throat> and uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone region real quick not a whole lot going on folks <clears throat> might have to cut this short solar ham what's going on we did have an upper sea flare uh, kicking off from a far side sunspot uh, that was an eruption measuring on C9.3 behind the eastern limb. Uh, looks like uh, due to the source location being out of direct view, this event was likely an M flare. So we do have uh, potentials here for a, a very active sunspot region rotating here into Earth pretty soon. <coughs> kind of see it. <coughs> Goodness. Yeah, I probably took off probably took off about five years of my life today breathing in that smoke. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, watching this pretty closely, folks. I am gonna bounce out of here before I completely lose my voice. Have a good night. Stay safe. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. <clears throat>